Hey guys, and welcome back to the Yes Means Yes podcast. On this week's episode, we are going to be discussing healthy relationships with men. I'm going to go around and let all the guys introduce themselves, but as usual, my name is Faith Namshev. I'm the Victim Advocate and Outreach Coordinator with Rape Counselors, and I'm really only going to be acting as facilitator for this discussion because I kind of want to get the men's opinion on this one and, you know, not mine. So I'm going to go ahead and let everyone introduce themselves. Uh, Chase, do you mind starting? I'll start. My name is Chase Autry. I'm 26 and I'm currently single. My name's Salem. I'm 20 and uh, I'm single. Righto, 35, happily married four and a half years. Um, I'm Mike and I'm married. I'm 26. I've been married for about a year and a half now. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you guys again so much for joining us. I'm really excited for this discussion that we were able to make it work with all y'all's schedules. So starting off, what does a healthy relationship look like to you? I'm going to approach this from not just like a marriage or like a, a um, engagement standpoint, more of just like a friend on friend or like a mother and child or a father and child, just that um, absolute 100% unconditional support in everything that they do, except obviously if it's wrong. Um, but providing absolute love and affection to them so they know that they are they feel they feel valid and that they, their goals are valid and that they can do whatever they want to do but also while making sure that um that it's realistic so not 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 giving doubt but at the same time saying hey like i know this is something that you really want to do and this is something that you've been thinking about for a long time but do you think that this is do you think that this is for you? Do you think that this is something that is capable within however the span of time that you have? Um, honesty also, I mean, once you, once you like break that honesty, like, I mean, I, loyalty is one of my biggest things. So I don't know if I could ever like truly bring that trust back to someone if they have violated it. Um, it's just not something that, comes easy to me and it's something I'm working on but um for other people like they're if you're if you're less likely to trust them you're less likely to talk to them you're less likely to engage with them which will kind of just distance you even more and then over time that distance is going to get larger and larger and you're just gonna it's it, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna fall apart um yeah does anyone else want to say anything I can literally keep going yeah um I guess I should have to clarify a little more, uh, I'm a seminary graduate, I uh, have a Master's of Divinity, so technically Reverend Rhino, but titles don't really matter all that much. I'm also a morning DJ, uh, so yeah, um, I'll be giving kind of the biblical perspective, uh, if you will, coming from uh, the Christian faith, and so, um, you know, as for what a healthy relationship looks like, the Bible does give us one central model of a healthy relationship, and that is the relationship of Christ and the church, um, as outlined in uh, the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 22 through 33, um, which I will read. But before I get to that, I do have to give a couple of uh, caveats to this. Um, first off, it, it should be obvious, but you don't have to be a Christian to be in a healthy relationship. Um, there are Plenty of non-Christians in healthy relationships uh, because God's common grace is a thing. There are plenty of Christians who are not in healthy relationships. Um, and so it is not necessarily a prerequisite, but that is the perspective that I have to come from because that is my, my experience uh, and my faith. And so uh, secondly, um, this passage does talk about relationships in the context of the husband wife relationship. Um, but, you know, the ideas and principles wherein can and should be extracted and where applicable applied to premarital relationships, um, dating, courting, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, so that said, um, a healthy relationship looks like uh, this, uh, reading from Ephesians. It says, wives, be subject to your own husbands as is to the Lord. Uh, for the husband is the head of the wife, as the as Christ is the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. 
Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having, been, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife, even as himself, and the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. Um, now, the word submit there uh, or be subject to, it, it tends to scare a lot of people. Um, if we read our modern ideologies into that view um, and view submission as a sign of weakness, but that's not what's going on here. Um, Paul's not talking about the wife as some kind of conquered foe that is you know, forcibly brought under uh, submission. Um, instead, he kind of correct, he correctly explains this relationship uh, in terms of head and body uh, or, you know, brain and body. And so, you know, if you think about it, think about it in those terms, um, you know, when my brain tells my arm to move up and down, you know, I want my arm to move up and down. You know, that's not weakness. That's correct functioning. Um, if the body is not following the lead of the head, i.e. my brain tells my arm to move and it doesn't move, that's bad. Uh, that's paralysis. Um, or if the body is walking and moving around on its own without the leadership of, of the head, that's also bad. Um, but again, we're, we're talking about a context of mutual submission. Um, the verse before that uh, section that I read talks about being subject to one another in Christ. So this is a, a healthy submission relationship um, and so, you know, when we're talking about submission here, we're talking about pure trust. Um, you know, no woman, no woman, according to scripture, uh, should submit to someone who has not proven himself to be trustworthy uh, and to look out for her best interests and to put those interests uh, on the same level of his own, as, as Paul talks about in that passage, um, treating her, her interests as those of his own body, um, loving himself her as he loves himself. Um, and so, yeah, that, more on that later. I know that's going to come up as one of the later questions. So uh, we'll, we'll say, we'll table that for now. But uh, again, uh, again an another popular misunderstanding of this passage uh, involves, uh, at least in the husband's role, thinking that he just, he should be willing to die for his wife. Um, because at that, you know, at base level, you know, that's what Christ did. He died for the church. And so, yeah, uh, in healthy relationships, men are called to give up uh, a life of ease. And you're called to give up, you know, your own preferences in order to direct your time, your energy, strength, your resources uh, to the happiness and fulfillment of your wife. Um, and of course, you know, that again, bringing back the, uh, the caveat, girl, wife, girlfriend, whatever level your relationship is, you know, your, your role as a man is to exalt and to lift up uh, and to provide for the happiness and fulfillment of your significant other. Uh, so yeah, your, your, your job in a healthy relationship, men, is to ensure that your partner feels secure, uh, that she feels happy, valued, uh, beautiful, cherished, loved, and important. Um, yeah, her, her life goals become your life goals, essentially. Yeah, a healthy relationship is one in which a man has his partner's full support uh, and encouragement in the pursuit of his healthy desires and life goals, and where the woman has her partner's full support and encouragement in uh, the pursuit of her healthy desires and life goals. Uh, so yeah, I know that's a lot, um, but hopefully 
you notice a pattern in everything that I've said. Um, everything I've said about healthy relationships so far has been focused on what you as a person give to the other in the relationship. Um, like Rhino said, faith is, is very important, but I'm sure there's, there's plenty of other uh, relationships out there that are people are not the same faith, but I could see definitely how it would make it a lot more difficult because there's going to be problems obviously come up um, just because you don't exactly align on a, a bunch of different situations. Um, with that being said, uh, a, a lot like what Rhino was saying, but you got to have two people that are willing to make sacrifices for each other. Um, and that could be, that can mean a bunch of different things, but mainly just putting uh, their partner first. Um, and making sure that, that, like you said, their goals become your goals and making sure that you might not get your way all the time. Um, like I said, I've only been married for a year and a half, but I've, I'm working on, <laughs> working on that, trying to make sure that. Uh, Lifelong process, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. But that's the main thing I think is putting your partner first and that goes both ways. It's not just, uh, not just uh, the guy doing it for the woman. It's mm -hmm. it I was kind of looking at it from all relationships as well. And what it really starts with is just like communication, um, being intentional. So talking about your wants, desires, things like that, being intentional with the other person and just kind of what you guys were talking about, making those pouring out like an acts of love, like being a doer. So like sacrificing and giving to those other people, but it really starts with communication and being just intentional and with what you want and what you're looking for. Uh, Yeah, definitely. Um, very good points made by all. Uh, and yeah, trust, communi you know, I, I talked about trust, but yeah, you, you have to build that up. And it is unfortunately very, very easily um, broken. And um, on the, oh, sorry. I thought yeah, oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. And on the same vein of support, but being able to basically take that person's, you know, their fears, their insecurities, all their pain and you're putting it on yourself. That way they don't feel like they're going through it alone. Um, so in, in that you like, it's, you're able to build your relation. You're able to build that relationship even to a, a higher, like ethereal level, um, regardless of whether it's a friendship or you're getting married to this person or you're dating them or not. But um, if you, if you can, if you can take all that pain and know that they are, absolutely supported and that you will be there in good bad times that i mean it's gonna they're gonna open up to you they're gonna be able to say hey like i i, I need help like it's, it's a great way to reinforce mental health in that sense um yeah yeah certainly um and again a lot of a lot of i, I didn't say it explicitly but yeah a lot of what we talked about can be applied to any relationship, uh, family, friendships. Yeah, you, it's the same thing. Showing love to another person, you know, involve, it, it always involves uh, self-sacrifice, um, you know, giving up what you, you know, are needing, want, wanting to do for the sake of another. Um, and sometimes uh, it involves taking initiative. Um, another uh Another part of uh, scripture in Romans talks about the fact that we love because Christ first loved us. Um, and yeah, you know, we never would have gone to him if he hadn't come first. Um, and there, you know, there are a lot of folks that it is so hard to ask for help. I mean, hey, I'm one of them. I can't stand asking someone for help. Um, but, you know, sometimes you have to just go out there and say, yes, I'm going to help you. I see you're going through something hard. Let me help you. Um, and then, yeah, just, we've talked about, yeah, love a lot, but I think another important word, uh, in relationships, and again, this involves a lot of communication is grace. Um, showing grace is, I don't want to say everything, but pretty close to everything in a healthy relationship because the, the, the biggest difference between the earthly relationships and that of Christ and the church is that we are not perfect. We are always going to mess up at some point. Um, and so showing grace to a per another person, you know, as I like to put it this way, grace begets grace. 
Um, so just, again, using my marriage as an example, the more I show grace and kindness uh, and love toward my wife, the more I motivate her to show grace and love and kindness towards me because she remembers these things. And the same is true. The more she shows grace and love and kindness toward me, the more I want to show grace and kindness and love toward her. So it is the, the opposite of the vicious cycle. This is the good cycle. Um, and so, yeah, always, always extend grace upon grace. Um, and yeah, uh, like you mentioned, uh, Sal- Salem, 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 yeah. Salem, Salem. Okay. Yeah. Being dependable, being loyal, always being there. Also very important. So yeah, that's one question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, um, I was worried y'all wouldn't talk as much as the women, but I'm impressed. Please keep going. Mm-hmm. But, um, so we're going to move on to the next question. And in this one, I think we've answered it kind of a little bit, but do y'all want to add anything else onto um, this? So what qualities are important to you in relationships? And I do like that y'all touched on relationships outside of romantic relationships, because we do want to discuss platonic relationships, um, familial relationships, things like that. So please feel free to touch on any of those. I would say accountability. Um, accountability to do the right actions, follow your morals, um, be able to continue on the path that you want to continue on while knowing that someone is there to help keep you on that path. Yeah, I would say, uh, probably someone who's like, just going to seek to help, like understand you and you're going to like try to understand them and they're going to like help you fulfill your dreams. I think something that's really important, someone that's going to help you fulfill your dreams. And then when things aren't going well, we've talked about loyalty, but that's going to like endure in the suffering with you. That's going to be there when you're at your lowest point and still going to support you and still going to be there with you. Yeah. And we, we already talked about trust and support. Um, And like we said, that the trust has got to be built. It's not. And and if you ever do break it, it's, it's really difficult to get it back. Um, and as far as the support goes, it kind of goes like with a bunch of the other stuff we talked about, but it's got to be a balance. If if one person's given a lot more than the other and the other's just receiving, 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 eventually that's going to become a problem. Um, and, and that's why, like you said, communication is a big deal because one person may not even realize that they're doing that or they're, they're not giving back enough. Um, and if you communicate stuff like that early, I think it's a lot, uh, a lot easier. Um, to avoid some of those problems. Um, I'm going to kind of zoom out a bit and say overall in terms of not necessarily a single relationship, but overall, if you examine all of your relationships, it's very good to have balance um, in those relationships. You know, you want, obviously you want, you know, those folks that you can go to anytime, uh, with your difficulties, your sorrows, your hurts. Um, you know, you want those folks that you can just laugh with and, you know, or, you know, watch a movie, play video games with, do whatever fun things you, you want to do. Um, and then, you know, it, it's also very important, um, especially when it comes to uh, faith and religion, have, have friends who view things differently than you. Um, and yeah, if you're surround, if you only surround yourself with people who think exactly like you, you're going to have a lot of mental blind spots. Um, and so, yeah, just guard, you know, guard your relationships and make sure you're forming friendships with, again, people you can trust, um, that, that do think differently, uh, from yourself. All right, perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, so we're going to move on and change gears a little bit. So you guys know um, we are operating this podcast out of a um, sexual assault advocacy center. So we talk a lot about consent. And I want to know, does being asked for or even asking for consent change when you're in a relationship? And do you believe it to still be necessary? I ask my friends if I can give them hugs. That's not going to change. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course it's, it's still valid. It's still a concern. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I kind of do, I, I kind of do the, the open arms things like hug, 
Yes, no, okay. And then we go from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, even in, even in marriage, uh, it, you know, when back talking, especially about sexual consent, it's still very much a thing. Um, it's not assumed, you know, the two, the two are one, um, but yeah, you're, ta- you're taking care of, of one another. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And commu- again, communication, getting on the same page, considering the other's wants and needs is more important than your own. And in doing so, helping yourself absolutely applies to, to consent you know, within marriage as well. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. It's, it's definitely still necessary. I mean, I can't, I can't personally imagine uh, her saying no and then me continuing on, but um, yeah, it's definitely still necessary. I agree with all the other states. It's definitely still necessary. Does it change? Like, I think something we talked about with the women is like, when you're in a relationship, it might look a little different than say if you were hooking up with someone. So would you say that in a relationship, in a consistent relationship, would you say consent looks different? I would say it looks different in terms of how like it's proposed. Um, But I don't think that it's a different concept. Yeah, same, same concept, uh, different application or, you know, different approach. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, again, within committed marriage, it, it's, you know, not at least for us, you know, it's not yes or no. If, it, if there's a no, it's like, okay, let's agree on when you know, to come, you know, to come back together. And so that's, you know, again, a a form, a good form of consent, agreeing upon a time, a place or a state. It's like, yeah, it's like when we're both done with whatever we have going on. And if we both have, if we're both up for it, yes, great. Um, If not, okay, we'll try again later. Um, But yeah, it's bottom line, same principle applies, Um, you know, you don't want to violate the other person's body or you know, their uh, personal uh, personal space, uh, even 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 within marriage, um, because especially within marriage, because you will definitely deal with the consequences of that, uh, unlike just hooking up. Okay, so was there ever a time, and we talked about, like, y'all are welcome to share as much or as little as you um, want and feel comfortable with, but was there a time you were ever in an unhealthy relationship, and if you were, did you learn anything from it? Yes. Um, It was a friend who was putting, who, who was insecure in themselves, and so they were putting all the doubts that they had in themselves onto me. And that began infecting me and slowly became more anxious, became more worried, less confident. Um, and what was the second part of that? What did I learn? Um, yeah, to, <laughs> to cut out the negativity from my life. Um, and that made me like redefine what I think a relationship is um, when it, when, if it's just like friend to friend or if I'm going to be in a romantic relationship or if it's with my even my parents or my brother um that they 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 supportive uh, they're they're never doubting me they're always supporting me they always within reason of course but um they always are there for me and know that i can do this i'm capable of this i don't need to put all of my own anxieties and worries onto this person And yeah, I have too. It's not a rom- a romantic relationship, but um, it it was one that you didn't really realize till you're in. It was more of like a friend group, and it's kind of um, it's it was mainly negativity. I'm not saying I'm the most positive person in the world, but negativity is like uh, just like gossip or anything else. It festers when you get in a group of people that are. Uh, that are like that. It's, it's really hard to break out of it. So, um, yeah. 
Yeah, and it took me a while to like leave that relationship because I didn't know what was happening. Um, and then also I didn't feel confident enough to make friends with other people um, because my confidence had already been brought down. So it was kind of like a self-perpetuating cycle. Um, and then, I mean, at some point, like, I just got really tired of it and I had to like break the cycle, which was a very, very hard thing to do. And for anyone that's in it, I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that you gotta, it's kind of, you gotta come to terms with it by yourself and you have to be able to know that you're worth more than being treated this way. Um, so any advice I would give to that person is just try and like know your value and redefine what you think a friendship is. I know that's a later question, but I wanted to stick that in there. I think for me too, just in past relationships, just learning to communicate like how you're feeling, not just accepting like certain things. Um, like I feel like I, I used to let a lot of things just slide and wouldn't express like how I'm feeling because I didn't want to hurt the other person, but it's just extremely important to be able to express like, Hey, this makes me feel this way or this I'm feeling this way. And so that person knows, you know, what they're doing. And then also just being empathetic towards other people is something else I learned. It's like, you have to be able to put yourself, you know, kind of in their shoes and be empathetic to whatever they're going through too. Um, if you don't, you're, you're not really going to understand that, you know, maybe they feel a certain way because of this or, you know, those kind of things. I think uh, balance is an important relationship. A lesson I learned from uh, past uh, failed romantic relationships. Um, yeah, just make, trying to make myself appear perfect um, was a bad thing um, and not really communicating any of the uh, internal struggles or sins that I was dealing with uh, on a personal level. And so, yeah, making the other person feel totally inadequate because, you know, here she was struggling with stuff and dealing with a lot of stuff. And, you know, I come in, you know, and while, you know, I cared deeply for her and loved her, I had my life together. So she, ha she felt like she had nothing to bring to the relationship. Uh, and it ended in disaster. Um, no details necessary uh, to give, but yeah, very important lesson learned there was just, yeah, compatibility of the ways that you show, love and receive it um that was those are ways in which we were very uh, incompatible um again like i you know and yeah like not sharing my uh struggles um and uh, my again trying to appear perfect um was the downfall of that but i am thank never nevertheless thankful for uh, my previous relationships because i'm thankful that i was able to learn those lessons then um, rather than having to learn them now within marriage. Um, you know, I came, I come to, you know, I came to my marriage a lot more uh, prepared, uh, praise God, than, than I would have otherwise. Um, but yeah, you know, just on, on the note of uh, giving and receiving love, you know, I think, I think a lot of folks are familiar with the five love languages, um, you know, that concept. Uh, but, you know, it's something that's worth doing some self-examination Four is, you know, what are the ways that you give love, that you show love to others? And what are the ways in which you feel love and receive love from others? Because those aren't always the same. Um, there's sure to be some overlap, but they're not always the same. And then, yeah, look, look for, you know, in, in terms of romantic relationships, look for a partner who receives the ways that you give and who gives the ways that you receive. So in a relationship, do you guys have red flags that you look for? For me, um, lack of self-restraint. And I mean, that's what they're doing with their body, with their mouth, what they like, their, their extracurricular activities. It's a lot of how they present themselves to the, like, I mean, you can see a lot in how they present themselves to the world, if they control themselves or not. Um, and if, if they if they can't, then what else would they not be able to control in a friendship or in a relationship? Like, would they would they would they outburst? Would they um, would they get physical? Would they? I mean, uh, it, it 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 shows a lot if you don't control yourself. 
I'd say for me, some of the biggest ones is like dishonesty, like from the very beginning. If they're dishonest from the beginning, it's probably going to be a cause of concern. Uh, even like in romantic relationships, like jealousy, they're like really jealous all the time from the beginning. I think that's a really big red flag. And just in general, just how they treat others. So like when it's just when you guys are out in public or even if it's your friends, like how do they treat other people? I think that's a if they don't treat others well, um, that mean, I mean, that's a very big concern. So I think those were the biggest red flags that I'm looking at in relationships. Yeah. And uh, as far as romantic relationships go, like you said, treating others how they treat their parents, I think is a huge, huge uh, tell on how they're going to treat you. Um also trust and what, what what i say by trust is is if there's this insane uh lack of trust or questioning all the time i mean obviously like i said trust has got to be built but if there's just nothing that you can do at all and they for some reason think that something's going on or anything like that i think that's kind of a red flag um and and like i said it's got to be built but if it's just cannot be built that's a that's a big red for me. Okay, so now we are going to talk a little bit about um, our relationships with ourselves. What does it look like to have a healthy relationship with yourself? And do you think that this is an important part of developing healthy relationships with others? I think this is the most important part of developing healthy relationships with others. If you can't have a healthy relationship with yourself, if you're not happy with yourself, if you're angry, mad, upset, anxious, worried, whatever, it's going to leak into your relationship with other people, regardless of whether it's romantic or friendship. Um, and it's going to start negatively affecting them. And then people aren't going to want to hang around with you. And then you're going to get isolated and you're going to get lonely. It's going to lead to depression. Um, so being able to cultivate the, the idea within yourself that you mean, you have value. What are the things that I need to be able to work on that may negatively impact other other people? Like, what are my strengths and what are my weak weaknesses? Um, and how can I improve upon these so that I can be the most supportive, loving, and just there for another person? Yeah. Uh, so. There's a professor, his name's Dr. Leslie Parrott. He kind of puts it this way. He says, if you try to get close um, with another person before you've done the difficult work at getting whole, all your relationships become an attempt to complete yourself. I think that's like perfect. Like if, if you haven't worked on yourself first, you're going to be constantly looking for other people for validation and you're just going to have constant anxiety and bringing kind of what he was talking about. Um, just all these different things. Um, negative things into these relationships and it's not going to be a very healthy relationship. So you definitely need to, to work on yourself first and kind of just understand your value and worth before uh, you get into a relationship. Yeah. If you don't have a good relationship with yourself, you're essentially just going to be projecting all your insecurities on, on the other person, whether you realize it or not. And uh, so I don't think there's, really any way you can have a healthy relationship with somebody else. We always like to end the podcast by asking the same questions of our guests. We want to know what message do you guys have for survivors? Um, yeah. So um, again, as a Christian, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, as a man and as someone who cares for you, the best encouragement that I can give you uh, is that Jesus loves you, um, that you are precious in his sight. Um, you, you are someone he considers worth dying for. Um, and just a, a word of scriptural encouragement from Psalm 139, 13 and 14. Uh, this, mess, this psalm talks about how God knits us together uh, in our mother's womb, uh, and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, and yeah, like what that means is that you know, God, who has made you, makes no mistakes. You know, He doesn't make anything wrong. Uh, you have this 
unbelievable inherent value and dignity simply by being a person made in the image of God. Uh, and it doesn't, it just, <laughs> it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what's been done to you. There is nothing, no, nothing, no, nothing that can take that value and worth away from you. Uh, you and your life are defined by your creator um, who loves you and desires this personal relationship with you. Um, you're not defined at all by what someone has done to you or what someone has said about you. Um, you're defined by God who doesn't make any mistakes. Um, and so that, that is my encouragement to you is to recognize your inherent worth and value, you know, cannot be taken away. So. Yeah. So the message I have for survivors is you are not alone in this. Um, you matter and you just have so much value and whatever's happened is not your fault. And you are extremely strong for being a survivor and just that, we love you so much. So just don't ever give up the fight that you are supported and loved. Yes, you are loved. And there is a community here that is willing to be there for you day and night after this. This is not something that defines you. And this is not like you are, you are not a victim. This is something that you can, you can, you can overcome. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be hard, but there are people who are going to be there to support you during this journey um, and you are going to come out of it stronger than you were before. Yeah. Um, it does not define you and that there are healthy relationships out there and do not settle for less because uh, they're there. Perfect. Well, um, I've so appreciated this discussion and you guys taking time out of your busy schedules to come and talk with us and about healthy relationships. Rhino had to hop off, but um, thanks to him too for um, giving his input. Does anyone have anything else to say before we sign off for the episode? Thank you for having us. Yes. No, I so, so appreciate it. Well, for everyone listening out there, um, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you guys on the next episode. Bye.